My name is Enrico Schaefer. I'm an attorney specializing in blockchain technology. And today we're going to be talking about uh, non-fungible tokens, NFTs. They're the hottest thing going in blockchain and crypto right now. And specifically, we're going to be talking about copyright and trademark issues with regard to NFT platforms and NFT sales. So we get a lot of calls from clients who want to start an NFT project and they have a lot of questions about how they should move forward with that project. And a piece of that puzzle deals with intellectual property rights. So today we're gonna to take a look at and learn a little bit about the trademark and copyright issues related to NFT sales. So let's dive right in. Uh, my name is attorney Enrico Schaefer. I'm an attorney with Traverse Legal. We specialize in, in crypto and blockchain. And so you're gonna see that we've got some resources on our website. If you wanna check those out, that's great. You'll find a link in the description. If you wanna go ahead and hit the subscribe button, you're gonna see uh, we've got a lot of NFT and crypto blockchain content and you'll get notified every time we post a new video. So go ahead and subscribe. And with that, let's dive right in. First question, what is a trademark? No better place to go than the United States Patent and Trademark Office. We're gonna be talking about trademarks with regard to these NFT projects. The next question we're gonna look at is what is a copyright? No better place to go than copyright.gov to find out what a copyright is. Understanding trademarks and copyrights are really key to a lot of these NFT launches. All right, so let's take a look at what a trademark is. A trademark can be any word or phrase, symbol, design, combination of things that identifies your goods and services in the marketplace so that consumers know when they see the word Nike or the Nike Swoosh, they know what company they're dealing with. Trademarks are designed to protect consumers as well as the trademark owner. So a trademark identifies the source of goods and services so that consumers know if they can trust interaction with the seller or the website who is displaying that trademark. So it provides a lot of legal protection for your brand, helps you protect your goodwill, and this is really relevant, helps you guard against counterfeit and fraud, which is of course rampant in the NFT marketplaces and in the NFT market itself. So these are the different things that you're gonna to wanna to understand about when we talk about trademarks. And why is this important? Because if you are the Board Ape Yacht Club or any other NFT offering, chances are you're operating under a brand. Board Ape Yacht Club is a trademarkable brand. It identifies the source of those NFTs with the owner of that, mar of that marketplace, Board Ape Yacht Club. We'll be taking a look at some of their trademarks and understanding why those trademarks are so important to protecting the Board Ape Yacht Club against infringers who might come up with some Board Ape or Yacht Club variation that is designed to cause, cause confusion in the marketplace to defraud, to counterfeit consumers. All right, so that's the trademark. It identifies the company and the brand. Who am I dealing with? Let's talk a little bit about copyright. So copyright is different than trademark fundamentally in, in several ways, but you want to think about copyright as who owns the art. It protects original works of authorship and it gets protected as soon as it gets fixed in a tangible expression. So if it's a digital asset, the moment that that artwork, that logo, that avatar, the digital asset that's being offered with the NFT, the board ape, as soon as that gets fixed in a editing device uh, in Adobe, it becomes copyrightable. It is copyright protected under common law. You can also register that copyright and that becomes important in terms of protecting your copyright. But the actual digital asset that goes along with the NFT sale is, is potentially copyrightable. And if you don't copyright protect your digital asset, as the owner of the project, as the founders of that project, um, you're gonna have some serious problems down the line with what did you actually provide to the NFT purchaser? 
did you even own the copyright or did you contract that work out with an artist who provided you with the digital asset? Did you get an assignment of that from the copyright owner, the person who actually put pen to paper? Uh, if not, there could be issues. The other issue that you're going to deal with with copyright is you're going to be licensing or assigning, typically licensing that copyright to the NFT owner. So the board ape, the particular board ape that I buy, okay, I'm going to get the, it's going to get reflected in the smart contract, which is going to go on the blockchain. That's the NFT itself is the smart contract. That smart contract is linked to the digital asset, the board ape. I now have this ownership NFT that says I own, but the question becomes, what do I own? And we're going to learn a little bit about the distinction between what kinds of licenses are out there, for instance, with Board Ape NFT assets versus CryptoPunks NFT assets. And so you're getting totally different things when you buy a Board Ape NFT than when you buy a CryptoPunk NFT. So this is really important. So independent creation of a original work that is and got enough creativity to get over the copyright hurdle is going to be copyright protectable. Whoever the artist is is going to own the copyright. If you contract that out, you need to get an assignment of that copyright in order to then be the copyright owner to be able to provide a license as part of the NFT sale. All right. So you're going to see on our website we've <clears throat> we've generated a, a, a number of different blog posts and pages about the idea of NFT copyright licenses we provide and we'll show you the NFT license that that we provide to people as a sample NFT license to go along with the NFT sale um, but you're going to want to take a look at some of these articles uh, they'll also be linked in the description below and so again subscribe and you'll see all this great linking and content that we'll provide you as a resource all right Buying an NFT, read the fine print and copyright language. Licensing NFTs, you need to know who owns what you're selling. NFT copyright license rights, due diligence is critical. Some of the themes. Now the best way for us to dig into this is actually look at what's going on with NFTs and use an example. Good example, Board 8 Yacht Club. Board 8 Yacht Club is a very well-known, very high value NFT where you've got a <clears throat> you know, a, a floor price of 83 ETH. So tens, hundreds, or millions of dollars per Board Ape. You can see here, Board Ape Yacht Club has got a logo. Board Ape Yacht Club, B-A-Y-C. It's got the skull. All of these elements are potential trademarks that identify the who, the what company is offering these tokens. Now, one thing that's missing here is a TM or a circle R indicating that this is a registered trademark. Doesn't mean they can't enforce their mark, but um, they certainly want to upgrade their logo on their website and on the NFT platform to tell people you're claiming trademark rights in the words board API club, B-A-Y-C, and the logo with the skull, the Nike swoosh that goes along with the offering. So the words board API club are potential potentially uh, worthy of trademark registration. The logo is also separately worthy of trademark registration. And the Board Ape Yacht Club is the, uh, the entity, the project owner, which is offering these Board Apes for sale. So that's the trademark rights, the words and the logo that identify the company. The copyright are the actual images, right? The uh, unique piece, pieces of art that are created for sale. These were originally uploaded by Board Ape Yacht Club and minted and then sold. So each one of these Board Apes, which can be filed as a copyright registration as a collection, but each one of these Board Apes is subject to copyright protection. Board Ape Yacht Club is either assigning or licensing these images to the NFT owner. Let me say that again. Board Ape Yacht Club is either licensing or assigning the rights to the digital asset, the digital image, the artwork that is attached to the token sale known as the NFT. Okay. 
So these need to be copyright protected and properly licensed and or assigned. If we take a look at the Board Ape Yacht Club's website, you'll see again, here's, this is sub, this is Board B-A-Y-C with the skull. This is subject to trademark law. This should have a TM or a circle R indicating that it's registered to tell people that they're going to protect it as a trademark. This is what you don't see in most of these NFT projects. The people who are launching NFT projects are failing to grasp at this early stage of emerging technology the importance of the intellectual property rights that are foundational to their business model. If you don't protect the trademark of your project, the trademark that goes with your URL, the logo that you designed to go along with the words Board API Club, if you don't protect those things under trademark law, you're going to have uh, very little leverage to stop counterfeiters, to fight back fraud, to protect your brand, to grow your brand. 50% or more of Apple's entire valuation market cap is its trademark rights. Apple, iPhone, iPad, um, you know, iMac, uh, you know, all of these different you know, brands that they've got, MacBook Pro, are worth 50% of their total value. You want to be thinking the same way if you're launching an NFT play. You want to protect your intellectual property to go along with it. It becomes even more important in a market that's subject to so much fraud. All right, so here you can see everything that's going on. Um, you're going to see terms and conditions here uh, for the Board API Club and also uh, for this, you know, the sister, which is the Mutant API Club, which you've probably heard about as well. But these are also really important. If you've got an NFT project that you're about to launch, these terms and conditions on your website are going to be important. Um, this actually tries to tell people what they're getting on the website, right? But then it also goes into ownership rights of your NFT. Now, this tells you what you can and cannot use the NFT for, and it tells you about commercial use. So this is the license that people got when they purchased their board ape. Now, the interesting thing here is that this now exists on their web page. What happens if this website goes down in 200 years? What was the license that was granted? Most people uh, in the industry are, are not even putting ownership information down along with their NFT sale. They're not telling you what you own when you own the NFT, what your uses are that are allowed with the NFT, whether or not you can make commercial use of the NFT. So kudos to Board Ape for at least having this information on the website. However, they can't make changes to this webpage legally uh, and modify the contracts because those contracts were already offered in acceptance at the time of sale. This should be captured in a more permanent way than, than a web page. All right, so let's take a look at some of the Board Ape Yacht Club trademarks. These are all trademarks owned by Yuga Labs, which owns the Board Ape brand website and which uh, is behind the Board Ape Yacht Club um, uh, project. And you can see they've got a lot of trademarks in play here, so that's great. Let's take a look at some of them. So, Board Ape. This is a standard character mark, meaning that it's just anyone who uses anything similar to Board Ape. If it's B O R B O A R D Ape, trademark office is going to see that as exactly the same. And any secondary use, any subsequent use, is going to be a potential infringement of the Board Ape Yacht Club standard character mark. So this is one of their marks, is probably their broadest and most important mark. It's a standard character mark, meaning that it's not the image, the logo, the design, the colors. It's just the words which are protected. Anything that's substantially similar or confusing with Board Ape as words is going to be potential infringement. And you can see here is Yuga Labs. They're the entity that owns this particular mark in the Board Ape play. And now the, we've got these international classes. So they're Board Ape in jewelry, probably digital jewelry, collectible printing trading cards, printed trading cards. Um, some of these I, I've not seen yet. <laughs> so they've registered trademarks and things that I'm not sure are actually out there. Hopefully they are. Hats, shoes, skateboards, beer, wine. These could be um, um, you know, uh, marks that they're, they're rolling out in the future. Online retail store, 
nightclub services, nightclubs, bar cocktail lounge, online social networking. So they have really tried to cover the, the bases here. You're going to see they also have a design plus words and letters mark, meaning that it is the logo, it is the style uh, of, of, of this design that they're protecting. So even if it's something different than Board Ape Yacht Club, if it uses a skull, if it's got a black background, if it uses apes, baboons, chimpanzees, gorillas, monkeys, orangutans, heads of primates, bones, um, then you're going to have uh, potential infringement. So anyone looking to mimic Board 8 Yacht Club, copy Board 8 Yacht Club, and uses a logo similar to this, now Board 8 Yacht Club has trademark rights. And you can see they've got additional trademarks that they filed. They filed for their Board 8 uh, Social Club. Oh, uh, board Ape Social Club. Um, interesting. So this is this is a Board Ape Social Club. This could be an infringing mark. I don't know, but uh, is is Yuba Yuga Labs behind this trademark? Well, this says that it's owned by Yuga Labs. This one says it's owned by Moeller Klaus. So is this an imitator who's trying to get in? It's in wines and spirits. Is it something different? Is it gonna be confusingly similar with the board Ape Yacht Club? Well, this is a potential issue for infringement, the type of issue for infringement that we see out there. All right, so let's take a look at a different project, which is CryptoPunks. CryptoPunks, another very famous NFT drop that a lot of people are trying to mimic, is different and then board eight yacht clubs in a number of different ways. But you're gonna see that CryptoPunks has potential trademark rights in the word CryptoPunks. Doesn't look like they've got a logo here uh, that they're displaying. And then they've got what are potentially copyrightable digital artwork that they can either assign or license as part of the NFT sale. Um, now, if we take a look at Board Ape Yacht Clubs, let's take a look at one of the NFTs. Where is the license agreement? How do I know what I'm getting if I'm buying a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT? And then we'll take a look at the same issue with regards to CryptoPunks. Uh, and where you hope you're going to be able to find that is in the actual platform. Well, Properties doesn't tell us what our license agreement is. CryptoPunks this about page is normally where you would want to find a link to the license agreement this doesn't tell me anything about what it is that what rights i have to my crypto punk when i buy it and of course the details just provide a contract ad address does not tell me anything about the license so i guess i could dig myself into the website for crypto punks unique collectibles etc uh, larva labs um, so uh, where do I know what it is that I have purchased and what rights I have in my crypto punk I don't know by looking at this uh, and there's no terms of service and there's no website agreements but let's take a look at about Matt and John um, Boom, there, there is nothing. I have no information, nor does anyone else really, by looking at OpenSea or the websites, understand what it is I receive when I buy a CryptoPunk. Am I getting full rights to this image? Am I giving limited rights to this image? What are my rights? What are the limitations being held by the copyright owner? I certainly didn't receive any sort of assignment that would have to be in writing. And if there's nothing spelled out, that means the owners of the copyright can, in an implied license situation, terminate or withdraw license rights with notice. So very interesting. All right, so let's take a look at Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, created by, that's great. Properties, doesn't tell us anything about the license. Board Ape Yacht Club, collection. Um, we now we know that this is visit Board Ape Yacht Club for more details. Go to the website, and we already took a look at. We do actually have in the terms and conditions ownership rights. You own the NFT. That's not the digital asset. That's not the Board Ape. That's the smart contract telling telling everyone that you own 
okay, uh, the, the, uh, the NFT, the token. But then it goes on. Each board Ape is an NFT on the Ethereum blockchain. When you purchase an NFT, you own the underlying board Ape. Wow, that's great. So here are some interesting things. It says you own it. Maybe you should say assign, signing you the rights. But it says that you've got personal use rights, um, grants you the worldwide royalty-free license to use, copy, display, the purchased art, the, the, the NFT. This is somewhat inconsistent with this language saying you own it. If you, if you own it, you can do whatever you want with it. This is now trying to pull back some of the rights, okay? Solely for the following purposes, okay? These are words of limitations. This is what you're looking for. So, okay, I don't own it, right? I'm getting a license to the board Ape, but I can use it for personal, non-commercial use as part of a marketplace that permits purchase and sale. Um, and so, uh, you know, I can resell it as long as the marketplace verifies each board ape's ownership right to display the art of their board ape to ensure that only the actual owner can display the art um, as part of a third party website or application that permits the inclusion, involvement, participation of your board ape. If there's a metaverse where you can bring your board ape into, you get that right as well. Okay. Um, so this is interesting. So you own it, but you don't own it. You own it, but you have you 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 don't. You're getting a license, and here are the things that you can do, okay? And some of the things that you can't do. Here's an interesting one that is a little bit different. You get a commercial use right, con, con, subject to your continued compliance with the terms. Which are they changing them over time? If so, that's probably not allowed uh, under contract law. But let's just keep going. Uh, Yuga Labs grants you an unlimited worldwide license to use, copy, display the purchased art. Okay, well, that's fairly limited. For the purpose of creating derivative works based on the art. Well, that's very broad. Derivative works means you could take your board ape and change it into something else. Examples of your allowed commercial use would be to use the art to produce or sell merchandise, t-shirts. That's great. Normally the NFT owners, uh, project owners are reserving that right to themselves, but they're in this case is providing it to you. Owning or operating a marketplace that permits the use and sale generally of the board ape. Owning or operating a third party website or application that permits the inclusion. This usually means that it's being integrated with a metaverse project or earning revenue from any of the foregoing. So this isn't limitless. There are things that are not on this list, but at least it's telling you what you're getting. With CryptoPunks, it's unclear. And you're gonna see that um, one of the things that is interesting is that CryptoPunks has registered the copyright to the CryptoPunks with the Copyright Office. Board Apes has not. Board Apes, even if they're gonna transfer certain rights, they should have um, a registered copyright. I was unable to find it under a company name search. So you're gonna see here, there's some, some commentary here on the, on the web about the difference between CryptoPunks and some of the other NFT offerings. CryptoPunks faces social blowback over NFT copyright license. Lava Labs gave out 10,000 NFTs to free to its community. The catch is that these NFTs had no written content license. Huh, now can you do that after the fact? Probably not, because <laughs> offer and acceptance, the sales already occurred, it'd be like be trying to put uh, limitations on the use of a car you already bought and have in your garage and you have the title to and now the, the dealerships can say oh you can only drive that to work this is a huge flaw in the crypto punks um, business model and you're gonna see that there's been a lot of debate about is there a license if so what is that license the page that a license used to exist on no longer exists and you're gonna see uh, that there's a number of other different articles here that talk about, it seems that no transfer of IP, copyright, or trademark to punk owners. He, this is an important concept. If there's no written agreement, it's buyer beware because the law is gonna default back to an implied license based on the marketing. Well, you must have gotten these rights, but implied licenses can be terminated, meaning CryptoPunks could literally pull back all of the CryptoPunks if the smart contract had allowed for that, right? Which it probably doesn't. It's probably technologically precluded by blockchain. But 
you can write a smart contract that can allow a pullback and if that's the case then uh, boom um, you could just simply lose your CryptoPunk back to uh, the project owner and there was a suggestion that maybe this this kind of NFT license developed by CryptoKitties is the one that belongs to the um, CryptoPunks um, community as well uh, but uh, hey that's just speculation at this point I don't see anything linking to this license or telling anyone that this is the license that they're getting but here's some of the things that are different about CryptoPunks than we have with Bored Apes what am I allowed to do with the art associated with my NFT if it's a crypto kitty or maybe a crypto punk? Use it, use it, use it. Okay, what am I not allowed to do? Modify it. Use the art to make or sell third party products. I can't do that. T shirts. Use the art in connection with images of hatred, violence, or inappropriate behavior. If you do these things, then theoretically you violate your license and uh, crypto kitties and or crypto punks might be able to pull that. Uh, asset back from you. Uh, you can't trademark your art or otherwise acquire intellectual property rights in it. Um, you know, I suppose what they really probably meant to say is copyright. <laughs> but you can see here we just have novices trying to develop contracts around complex IP rights that uh, literally don't make any sense in some regards and certainly are, are, are lacking in specifics in others. And um, so you can see here, you could actually take a look at the actual license language and you're going to see that there is uh, commercial use limitations here with these licenses subject to your continued compliance. You get a non-exclusive, non-exclusive to your CryptoPunk, non-transferable license to use, copy, or display uh, your NFT. Okay. You can use it commercially as long as it doesn't earn you more than $100,000 in gross revenue per year. However, you may still sell that at the marketplace for as much as you can as you can muster. So, very important. All right. So we've talked a little bit about the difference between the copyright of the artwork, trademarks related to the project owners, why those are important. They're important to the project owner, but they're also important to anyone that's purchasing one of these NFTs. One of your risks in the NFT marketplace is an unknown license. If there is no specific license provided, how do you know what rights you're getting, whether or not they can be pulled back and related issues? Okay. We created an open source NFT license and you can see on, on our website, we've got a whole article about it and uh, we link actually to this, this license which you can use or modify uh, and, and go ahead and, and, and click on this link called NFT Copyright License Language. You're going to see that it's going to take you to a web page that's got um, a web page for an NFT license project, open source license, and one of the licenses that's currently available is this license which tell both the buyer what they're buying and identifies for the seller what they're selling and they're selling a license to the associated digital works um, this this version of it allows you to receive certain limited rights in the works non-exclusive transferable license meaning you could sell it use copy display may not make commercial use of the of the work in this instance except to resell or transfer some of all the rights granted herein um, and so look at this is a very crude and basic license, but better than nothing. All right. So if you're an NFT platform, if you're looking to launch an NFT project, you need to work with a blockchain attorney who understands intellectual property, who can help build your help you build your business on top of a strong foundation of intellectual property rights, licensing language, copyright registration making sure you own all the rights that you're trying to send downstream through an NFT sale. If you are a buyer of an NFT, you need to be looking for the license agreement that goes with the NFT, the digital asset that goes with the NFT. What rights are you getting in that NFT? My name is blockchain attorney Enrico Schaefer. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, follow our channel, and we'll be here to help all along the way.